Welcome back to 12 Days in March. Over the next couple of days, I will be posting excerpts from the review series I present at the medical school. I thought these might be fun until I complete the entire video library. So, to be clear, these are brief, topic-based presentations that include NBME-style questions with a detailed analysis of what the question writers are trying to emphasize. Where appropriate, I toss in additional background information. All in all, it should be fairly painless, and hopefully you'll find some use in these presentations. And with that, let's launch our first question. Good luck! Alrighty. I, I actually love this question because it's very typical of thyroid type questions where they give you some symptoms of thyroid disease and then are supporting wherever they're trying to take you with data. So the symptoms are a little disparate from what the data tells us. Take home number one, data, greater than physical exam, greater than verbiage, and this is a great example. Data, that TSH is normal. Okay, first and foremost, if you want to know what's going on, you want the barometer of the thyroid gland, look at the TSH. So when they tell you the TSH is normal, that means the pituitary is sensing euthyroid. TSH is board speak for the patient being euthyroid. So whatever comes next, and that's where the TSH is within the normal range as this one is. So then when they give you this other junk, like a high total T4, you got to go on ahead and process that. So how can you have a high total T4, but a normal TSH? And the issue is the total T4, total versus free T4. They're going to come after you with this one. It's a great way of coming after thyroid binding globulin, and that's what the answer is on this one. So the patient being pregnant, estrogen drives uh, liver production of thyroid binding globulin. You have more binding globulin. You have a higher T4 but you don't have a higher free T4. It's just this kind of larger reservoir, and you know that we don't have a higher free T4 because the TSH is normal. So the TSH, do not be fooled by the, we'll get to the symptoms, don't be fooled by the total T4. You're going to be looking for free T4. Free T4, four in the TSH, will pretty much travel together. I need a visual representation, so I made lots of thyroid binding globulin induced by pregnancy. Uh, oral contraceptives will do it too, and I have lots of T4 total, but the free T4 is not changed, nor would the T3. So pregnancy, high total, normal free T4, normal TSH. And again, they put in their heat intolerance palpitation to make you think she's hyperthyroid. They put in their weight gain to make you think that she's hypothyroid because it's what they can play with. They can play with the language. They can do that, but they can't lie about the data. And then the only other thing to take home on this one is why is that thyroid gland palpably enlarged? And the answer is HCG and the structural as well as receptor homology with TSH. So it's not uncommon for a pregnant woman to develop thyromegaly. Be familiar with the idea that HCG can drive the thyroid gland. And here's just another representation, the idea who can stimulate the TSH receptor. So TSH, thyroid stimulating antibodies, as well as HCG. And that is a classic thyroid question. So what are the exceptions where TSH is disparate from the idea of hyper and hypothyroidism? It's just these two scenarios. So I'm telling you TSH is the language, but if you have a high T4 and a high TSH, that's the language of a adenoma. And the flip side is signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. A low T4, you should have a high TSH. What if the TSH is not elevated? Well, you have pituitary failure in that instance. And the, the classic hypo pit is Sheehan's, okay? So those are the two exceptions. Otherwise, TSH always tells you what's going on with the thyroid. All right, let's shift gears and take on another major topic in the world of thyroid disorders. Good luck. So let's launch this little topic. The answer here is data is king. They're giving you a biopsy, and you need to be familiar with the language of mononuclear cell infiltrate with, and the giveaway is the multinucleated giant cells. This is thyroiditis. So we have somewhere in here tender neck mass. We'll get to that. And the nomenclature is really granulomatous, painful, dequir veins. Here's the pathology. So all the thyroiditis will give you follicular atrophy. They'll all have inflammatory infiltrates, 
but what makes this granulomatous to core veins or a painful thyroiditis is the idea of these multinucleate giant cells. So you have to be familiar with that. That is the language they're going to use. That's how they're going to be telling you that a patient has granulomatous thyroiditis. So I, I want to go off on thyroiditis because it's confusing and it's important and it's a great target for lots of stuff. So here in this question, you see tachycardia, heat intolerance, tender neck mass, that all, the tender neck mass goes along with the thyroiditis, but the tachycardia, heat intolerance is the hyperthyroid phase. A month later, you have this hypothyroid phase, lethargy, cold intolerance, and weight gain. So the idea of thyroiditis coming in phases, hyper followed by hypo, uh, followed by the recovery phase is important. And if we actually go through what's literally taking place here. So on your left, we start off with the normal thyroid gland that has T3, T4, and thyroglobulin all preformed. And so of the thyroiditis, you can have viral infection or lymphocytic, and lymphocytic including all the autoimmunes, including postpartum thyroiditis. And in the middle, you can see with those lightning bolts, you have now a damaged gland. Gland is damaged. It's not stimulated as in Graves' disease, but it's just damaged, and that little green thing is a hole. So we have a damaged gland. You get this outpouring of preformed hormone and thyroglobulin, and you'll see why that's important. And that's what takes place during the initial insult, the first four weeks of an episode of thyroiditis. They are hyperthyroid, high T4, low TSH, thyroglobulin in the circulation. Okay, that's a whole, it's a damaged gland. It's not like stimulated to make more thyroid hormone. It's whatever's made has been released. That's the key take home. So again, it's hyperthyroid, so you know the TSH is going to be suppressed. That's the first thing you'll get. But once you have a patient who's hyperthyroid, you have a low TSH, you would add a T4 that was uh, elevated, your next step, the next step is I need a radioactive iodide scan. And these things are done urgently. So when I see someone, they have it, I order it, it's done within, you know, like five to seven days, okay? And you get the scan. When there's no uptake, that's consistent with thyroiditis. Graves, as you know, is going to light up like a Christmas tree. No uptake goes along with thyroiditis, and you've basically now made your diagnosis. At this point, you just have to distinguish between is it lymphocytic or is it uh, viral, and then has implications as far as additional testing and outcomes. All right, so it runs its course. The hyperthyroid phase has run the course. The, the gland is damaged, and it's going to repair. It's got to go through this reparative phase. But at this point, you have all these empty follicles. So you just entered this hypothyroid phase where you're barely keeping up with thyroid production. TSH is up, and the gland has to recover. And that's, in fact, what it does during phase three. So that's basically it, and then you have kind of normal thyroid gland. That is the cycle of thyroiditis, and the way I present it here, it really, uh, you know, it's painless. It's a, it's a fun condition. It's a clinically relevant one. You'll see these people in your clinics. You don't need the endocrinologist to do these. You make these diagnoses yourself. All right, and so then the excitement becomes, well, is it viral or is it lymphocytic? And the way you sort it out is with antibodies. So if they have thyroid peroxidase antibody, positive, then it's presumably lymphocytic. If the antibodies are negative with an elevated thyroglobulin, it is presumed viral thyroiditis. And that will do it for this installment of our review series excerpts. In these brief presentations, we will keep our eye on the prize focusing on the highest yield question-based review materials. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.